I'm Christine Stewart. I write as Christine Stewart Nunez, and I'd like to read my piece from the up for the forthcoming Mom Egg Review. It's from my man, my memoir in process or my manuscript, <laughs> memoir manuscript. I'm calling now Silences and Seizures, but it is a it, my piece in Mom Egg is called Simplifying. When Landau Kleffner syndrome (LKS) caused my son Holden the son of a pro professor, to lose language and take a hiatus from learning. My friends marveled at the irony. They Fall Into Screens, or now Silences and Seizures, is a memoir about raising a son with a rare epilepsy syndrome, which to say it's about the fear of seizures and the fear of unknown futures, about how words unraveled in a child's mind just as they blossomed in his mother's. At the beginning, I didn't know seizures could scatter a child's words across fields of memory like a strong wind, or that they could do this over time, syllables falling through synapses like sand in a sieve. This memoir narrates Dr.'s misdiagnosis of holding seizures and the deterioration of his behavior and language as I struggled to research solutions, keep my marriage together, maintain hope, and sustain a creative life. Simplifying is an excerpt from my memoir. In this chapter, I'm preparing to put my home on the market after a divorce, and I realize that I can't take care of the house and the yard by myself. I closed my laptop and took a deep breath. Work with the life you have now, not the one you thought you had. I glanced at my packing list, toys, winter gear, kitchen gadgets, outdoor stuff, and decided to work on Holden's room. In front of Holden's bookshelf, I knelt. To my left, I'd stacked a pile of liquor store boxes, the perfect size for books to move to the condo. On my right, a pile of plastic bags for books to give away. I touched the spines of books from his babyhood, Winnie the Pooh, Opposites, First 100 Words, Good Night Moon, Peter Rabbit, My Many Colored Days, First Dinosaur Book, Touch and Feel, my many colored days fell off the shelf, its cardboard frayed at the ends, and I opened to a page with a red horse, smudged as if painted by a child. Other days, I kick my heels on bright red days, that's how it feels. He loved this book about feelings, and we'd always name the feelings of the day. Brown days were sad, purple days lonely, yellow days busy. He can't even name his feelings anymore, I thought and he's already too old for this book. I realized I'd been keeping it for the sibling he was supposed to have. I tossed it into the path a plastic bag. Donate, I thought, then reconsidered. Should I save this book for his keepsake box? Would he even want or value a keepsake box? I, I took it out and put it into a liquor box, writing keepsake books with a Sharpie. Less sentimental books were easier to sort. Those for more advanced reading, I decided to keep. Be optimistic, I thought. He'll learn to read eventually, right? Holden's toys were harder to assess. I started with his board games, Sliding Orchard off the shelf. I remember purchasing this game from Fat Brain Toys and teaching him how to set up the cherries, pears, and berries on the trees. As a cooperative game, we had to harvest the fruit before the raven ate everything. He loved it. Before. But he couldn't remember the rules anymore. He couldn't remember to take turns. These are toys for a boy who is normal, not a brain whose brain is plagued by seizures, I thought. I kept it anyway, hoping. Others, like Shoots and Ladders and Candyland, I donated. For each kind of toy, games, cars, or superheroes, I asked, can Holden play with it now? Are there too many rules? Will Holden ever play with it? If he gets better, will he be too old for this toy? Every few minutes, a toy would conjure a happy memory, and I'd tear up for a few minutes, then plow ahead. Sometimes, I considered myself delusional to hope that he'd someday play again. I'd already packed away his Legos, because even though they didn't require language or rules, he'd started putting them in his mouth. After finishing his room, I moved outdoors. I undid the herb spiral garden I built from scratch, pulling up dill, cilantro, and oregano by the stems. 
The roots blanched under the sun. I hauled cement pavers one right after another from the heart of my yard and set them beside my front step. I free cycled them, imagining someone using them for a patio or playhouse. Then I disassembled my compost area with a pitchfork, displacing a red striped garter snake, its slim ribbon body disappearing into the grass. I filled wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow with compost, piles glittering with grubs and millipedes and heavy with fat worms. My neighbors received three years worth of saving and turning. I yanked out the yawning bloom of a volunteer squash. The chicken wire free of the chain link fence scratched the dirt partly encased with weeds. Two fat long garter snakes, black with thin lines of gold, slithered away and came back periodically to see if it was over. And this is how packing went, a toggle between my mantra, simplify, 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 and the memories, the sentiments. Even kitchen gadgets took analysis. Would I have time and energy to big spritz cookies or fold them like I had with my mother? Would he even be able to do that? And why keep the equipment? Recycling or junkyard or Craigslist? For two solid weeks, plus four more weeks of partial days, I sorted and packed and repaired. When a space was cleared, I figured out a way to make it look better, a fresh coat of paint, a new mirror. Even the basement got new carpet and new shelves. Everything about readying my house to sell and for us to move had a reason, a meaning, a memory, every repair, every pruned shrub. When thoughts of failure crept in, my inability to take care of the house and yard, yes, but also the four miscarriages, the failed marriage, Holden's challenges. I dealt with them, trying to talk myself into a good space, forgiving myself and acknowledging faults. Is, is this what they mean by letting go? Once creativity was grounded in seeding, nurturing, inventing, conceiving, preparing to move showed me that I must tear down, remove, ruin. To clear space and start over makes destruction an act of trust, trusting that the work would make room for something new. You can find my work at christinestuartmedias.com. Thank you.